Okay, in this one I'm going to talk a little bit about how a neutral works or what the MEN, and the MEN is this point here. The one that joins between the earth bar and the neutral bar. Now this little bit of wire here is fairly important and why, why we have it to use the two different um, methods of getting a fault current back to around the loop. Now when we talk about a fault current or loop circuit, so basically the supply comes down through the fuse or the circuit breaker, down through to the appliance, down through the element, back down via the neutral, comes back, goes back up, around through here, back down and around, and we get this continuous consumption of electricity. So that's if my appliance is working perfectly. So as long as my appliance is, not perf is perfectly working, I get heat or um, the consumption of energy into this element, creating heat, and the flow of electrons flow through this circuit, back up around, like I said, through. Now this here, from here to here, is a point of attachment. So what I'm gonna do is draw a line from here. So through there, that's my outside part. So what I'm saying is, once we leave the main switch here, or circuit breaker, it travels up through to the point of attachment, back out to the street, through to the element on the transformer, which is my transformer winding, back to the start point, and comes back via the neutral, back into the house, and my neutral is. So that line there could be taken as your point of attachment or the main service fuse. Anyway, we call that the loop circuit of where current flows. And the point that breaks the circuit is the circuit breaker here. Now the circuit breaker will only do it if we get an overcurrent protection. So if, for example, if I get a fault down to earth, which we're gonna talk about, the circuit breaker will work, or if I pull too much current for the consumption of the wire, for the value, now don't forget, fuses are rated to protect the wire, not the appliance. All right, so if I have 2.5, and the maximum, depending if I'm running through thermal insulation, whatever, I can only run up to a 20 amp circuit breaker. So the 3008 book covers this for all different sizes of how we rate our circuit breakers to protect the cable, all right? And the same with fuses. The only difference we have with a fuse is we have a HRC, is we have a 0.9 D rating because we have a thermal effect. The thermal effect comes from the wire to be heated up. So if my Cable can only take 20 amps, I have to derate it down by 2 amps, and that'll be 20 times 0 0.9, we'll probably take it back down and lose 2 amps, because I've got to allow for that 2 amps to heat up and trip the fuse wire. Okay, so there is a difference between using a circuit breaker and a fuse. Um, the only difference with HRC fuses, they do have a big KA rating, okay? This is probably talked in, a, um, in some of the units. HRC fuses being made of ceramic, don't basically melt very easily. So they have a very large KA rating, okay? That's why you'll see a lot of them as service fuses. They're a ceramic fuse. They can trip, the wire will, inside will melt, but will not cause damage. Circuit breakers, you can get a mostly 6KA minimum for Victoria under the SIR book, service and installation rules. But you'll also find that each state, they do travel differently. Some have a main switch as a service fuse. Um, in Tasmania and places like that, um, South Australia. So we still have a ceramic fuse in our holder on the main switchboard um, to protect the circuit coming into the house. Then we have the circuit breakers which then protect all the sub-circuits. Now, just to go back on the fault loop, so we're gonna come back around here. I've already talked about the, the formula which works out. The formula, now when we talk about fault loop, we talk about we have the active, all right? And then when we do get the loop, we talk about the earth, okay? So the definition talks for fault loop impedance is RPH. So when we look at our graph in our book, we see RPH, which is the phase, or the not so much the red phase, but the resistance of the phase, okay? Some people think that's R for red. It's not. It's the resistance of the phase and the resistance of the earth back here, okay? Now, once we get to this point, that why this is so important and people look at it and go yeah but you know it's just the thing the wire coming into the top of the fuses and all out in the street is quite large now why we have the MEN system we're going to talk about that little bit at the first at the start 
So the MEN is that we can allow the fault current to take the path of least resistance. So I want to put this into your head. The difference, what's the difference when it comes to here to the ground? What changes all over Melbourne, and I talk about this, is the ground resistance. If you live in Chelsea down on the beach, you've got very sandy soil. You can live in Werribee, you've got rock and thistle and, and clay and all that type of stuff. Then you go down to Belgrave or Werribee, you might have very sandy soil, like nice green um, brown soil. But what I'm getting at is the ground resistance from this point here to this point here is unknown. Okay, we do have a table in RPH, uh, sorry, in um, 3008, table 29, I think it is. It talks about the um, what we call the ground resistance, right? I think the perfect one is 1.2, all right, the resistivity of the soil, 1.2. Anyway, this part here cannot be guaranteed to say what value it's going to travel through the ground. But if I go through here and go back up through my MEN link and take the neutral back up and through here, what doesn't change on the aerials out in the street and all around Melbourne and all over Australia, doesn't matter where you go, the aerial conductor, being of aluminium, right, well, the resistance will always be the same because it's pretty much the same size. It doesn't change. It might change slightly, but the resistance can be guaranteed. So via my neutral, back up here, right, the fault currents come back up, come back through here, back around, and it comes through. The fault current will take the path of least resistance, so it means less current's going to have to trip before it operates the main switch or the circuit breaker, okay? So the only other part where it's going to create a high resistance is on this active here and on this earth. Because you remember, the time the wire gets to the top of the main switch, it's normally about 16 mil or 10 mil. It's a quite a large wire. The larger the wire, the least, res the least resistance. It's only when we start getting down here to 1.5s, 2.5s and all that for our sub-circuits that if the resistance is too long, so in other words, the length of the cables is way too long, right, or it's too small, that means I'm going to have to try to stick a high current flow down along a short, a small wire and have a higher resistance. So that's why we work out the fault loop impedance here. Now that does change with breakers. Depending if I've got a type B, type C or type D breaker, that resistance does change dramatically, okay? Because on a type D, I've got to have 12 and a half times, where a type B, it's only four times, okay? So that does change, all right? There's a table called 8.1 and 8.2. 8.1 is for a live circuit. 8.2 is for a dead circuit, right? And that talks about the resistance of the active, right? And the resistance of the earth on those tables. So you'll have one there when, it's un when the test is done under live, when you measure resistance when it's live, and when you measure the resistance when it's dead under the 8.2. Now, something to take into consideration, when you put voltage onto a cable, heat and stress change, and the resistance changes as well, all right? So, like I said to you, why do we have the MEN for? So that can, we can op option a length out. Now, if you do leave the MEN out, it means it's just going to have to come down via the ground, back via here, back up the pole of the telephone pole. So each transformer, or where we get our supply from, always runs an earth down the pole. It'll run down the ground, okay? And it'll come back via this point. But... The problem is I've got this very high resistance on the ground here and that's going to create problems, all right? Um, but look, anyway, even if you do come out of a house with the earth thing, it can also pick up the earth stake next door as well, but it might not have to travel over this ground. But in the, at the end of the day, the MEN link here, right, is to create a short path or the path of least resistance back via the neutral, all right? So like a, in a quick shot, nutshell... MEN link, as I said, takes the path up via the neutral, but it's when we get into the house that we call the fault loop impedance. That's a big thing now. In the old days, many years ago, when we had rewobble fuses, the earth only had to be two ohms, okay? We didn't have different size circuit breakers and all that stuff. We only had, we, we basically had two ohms. That was it in the late 80s and 70s. And when, fault, when they started looking at it more and we started putting RCDs on and things like that, this started becoming very important. You'll find that all lighting and power circuits and even up to 35 amps now have to have an RCD. So that's even given us more protection again. So basically, if we get the smallest little tiny current, so like hospitals where they have a type D, sorry, a 10 milliamp um, RCD, we only got to get 10 milliamps down to earth as tripped. But in a normal domestic installation, we have 30 milliamps. So once 30 milliamps goes down the ground here, goes back, 
the RCD picks up an imbalance between active and neutral, and that's how the RCD works. It picks up an imbalance between active and neutral. So if I've got five amps going in and five amps coming out, everything's sweet. But if I have five amps coming in and I lose 30 milliamps or greater on the earth, then it sees an imbalance and that RCD will trip. Okay, I'll try to make that as simple as possible. But as I said, why we have an MEN link, it's important, is because it creates an alternative path for us to take the fault current down the main neutral on a path of least resistance.